Welcome back to what used to be the Meltran Designs podcast until I didn't record for like a month and a half or something stupidly crazy long time. Anyway, um, if things look a little bit different, I'm just using my computer camera. I don't know where my webcam is right off the top of my head and I was like, I'm going to record really fast. I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to get back in the habit of recording. So here we go. I don't know what episode number this is. I'll stick it on when I upload it. It doesn't really matter all that much anyway. You're here and I'm here and we're here together and yeah. Um, as far as life goes, a lot has happened so I'm not even going to try to catch you up on everything. Um, let's just say it's been busy. Um, I've been vending with my lotions and they have been very well received. I did three shows in the month of November and I have one more coming up this weekend. Oh, today is December 3rd, 2015. <laughs> and it's actually, this week is my podiversary. I um, started my podcast three years ago this week. You can't tell um, because of the number of podcasts I have, but I also had a baby in there and I haven't recorded every week, so that's all right. Anyway, um, yeah, so the lotions have been going well. If you are interested in some Christmas presents, it is keeponwithlife.bigcartel.com. Um, I do offer gift sets and things like that. I don't have them in the shop, mainly because I just haven't gotten around to it. If you're interested in a gift set, I'll try to put them up. I can't promise. Um, if you really want something more than just ordering a couple or whatever, I have some organza bags and things like that that I can that I can put together. So, anyways, just contact me and let me know, and um, I can get one set up for you. Um, I do have knitting, and and a little bit of other stuff to talk about. Um, I have finished object and some works in progress. Um, no spinning, a little bit of news on designing. So, all right, it's probably going to be a little bit scatterbrained, but I'm just going to throw it all out at you and hope that it goes from here. <laughs> um, the retreat that I'm putting together in April, it's called Fiber Fanatics Unite, and it's from April 21st to the 24th. You can find a group on Ravelry called <clears throat> Fiber Fanatics Unite. And I almost have 30 people who are coming. It's so awesome. Um, yeah, so if you wanna come, all the information is in the group. It's super affordable. It's going to be super fun. The place is amazingly gorgeous. So go check out the information there. And if there um, is any information that you feel like is missing, go ahead and send me a PM. Um, I'm Ra I'm Anansi on Ravelry. Um, and on Instagram, I'm Meltran Designs. I don't think I said that before. All right. Anyway, so yes, please check out the retreat and come if you can because it'll be fun. Let's jump right into knitting. Works in progress. I have quite a few because <clears throat> because I've been able to get ahead of what my like ahead ahead of what my class is knitting. Um, I have pulled out some old works in progress from the beginning of this year, and I'm trying to finish those. So I'm just going to grab what's close to me and kind of work my way down the line. This is not one of those old ones. This is actually a class project that will be coming up in the spring. The pattern is called Stripe Tees instead of Strip Tees. It's a sock. I'm knitting it out of a Zauber Ball um, Crazy Ball. This is what I have so far. Um, I have the back three stripes. And, ah, oh, Quinn woke up, dang it, okay. And then I have the heel going on and I know it looks all discombobulated because this is still being held on the circular but I do have the first stripe going forward on the foot so anyways it's a really cool pattern it's free on Ravelry I'm having a lot of fun working it um, here's the yarn I'm using um, it's supposed to be you know teal and red or whatever it looks mostly just green and red like Christmas so I guess these will be my Christmas socks um, 
I didn't really want Christmas colors. It's not what it looked like on the website, but that's all right. They are beautiful nonetheless. And um, I'm doing that on a size one needle. All right, next is this I cast on today. Actually, this is the third time I've cast it on um, because I just am having some bad luck with making it work, but I think I figured it out now. It looks like this so far. It's actually a top-down hat. Um, can you see the fuzz? Like, let's see if I hold it right here. I don't know if you can see the amazing amount of fuzz. This is some yarn that I got when I was at Maryland Sheep and Wool, and it has dog hair in it. I have the tag right here. It is Seven Sammy's Luxury Dog Fiber. I think that's probably going to show up backwards to you too. <laughs> oh well. Um, it is 100 yards, 50 grams, 30% dog, 70% merino. Hopefully that the it flips it when I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so yeah, it's super fuzzy and <clears throat> the reason I decided to do top down is because when I was doing bottom up, I was running out of yarn and only was like a quarter of the way through the hat. So I figured if I go top down and then just knit until I have enough to bind off, I'll just do a roll brimmed beanie and call it good. So anyways, I love the color, love the halo. It's actually a lot of fun to, to work with. So um, anyway, so there's that. I'm doing that on size nine. What is that? 6.5? 6.5 millimeter or 7? I don't know. Um, the third thing I'm working on, the reason I started the hat is because I don't have anything that is just plain old, just stockinette, and I needed a break. I'm to a part on the socks where I have to do some math, and um, some other stuff is at the point where I have to think, and so I'm just like, okay. I need a little break. So this shawl is called Cornflower. Here's how it looks. I'm knitting this out of Cascade Heritage Silk. So it's a wool silk blend. Um, and it, I'm having to be careful because I stopped partway through the row. Um, here's the back side. It's a reversible shawl. Um, the reason I needed a little bit of a break from this, I've been having so much fun working on it. Um, I'm to the edging and you increase to 500 and some odd stitches. Like it's a really rapid increase over two rows. Um, you have these kind of broom, kind of a bottom of a broom looking fan out parts. Um, and it gets to be a lot of stitches really fast. And I'm gonna be doing the lace edging. The thing is, I don't have a ton of yarn left. I mean, I have a decent amount. So what I'm gonna do is just pretty much go until I run out and then I will take the solid, cause I'm doing the edging in the gray and then I'll take the blue and bind off with it. So wherever I end, I mean, obviously I'll end on a, an end of a row, but I'm just gonna work until either I finish the pattern or I run out of yarn. It's a really common thing with that pattern to run out of yarn. Um, I had more than it called for, but um, I knew that was still going to be um, a possibility. I'm actually knitting it on two different size needles, a three and a four. Um, I don't know why. I think it, it must have given me gauge or something. I don't know. I just picked it up and started working on it, and it's working fine, and it matches the gauge that I was getting. So um, anyway, that's in one of my 31 bags. Last thing that I'm working on is my color work sweater that I started back in January. And actually, I, I technically I finished the whole top. Um, I'll show it to you first and then I'll talk about what I need to do. So here's, here's how it looks. It, I am completely in love with it. You can see right here's where the sticking will be. And I decided to do the arms solid um, because it was just too much, uh, too much patterning going on 
to not break it up a little bit. So I just did a chunk of the chart. It's really windy outside. A chunk of the chart at the bottom of the arm and then started up here. Um, I had a different stitch count on the arms and so I thought what I was doing was going to work for the arm, the shoulders and it will, um, but I should have stopped about here where this brown section is. It's not that many rows and because it's wool and kind of sticks to itself a little bit I'm not worried about having to pull it out. I don't like having to pull out the three different colors but it's just maybe 10 rows so um, I'm going to pull that out and do a three needle bind off and then I will be ready to pick up and do the neck um, the neck band and then we will be cutting some yarn. I'm super excited and um, Vicki from the Heartland Knits podcast um, is a sticker extraordinaire. So she said that she will do a VKN with me and kind of walk me through it, just to make sure I know what I'm doing correctly and all that. Um, I'm not scared to cut it. I just want to make sure I do it right um, so it looks good and um, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, that is all I have that I'm working on. I know it seems like a lot. The, the sweater I haven't worked on in a while because... I needed to wait and figure it out and I was kind of in knitting mode just go 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 and so I just set it aside and um, the sock I've set aside like I said just last night um, and the shawl I've been working on like crazy part of the reason too is because moving into finished objects I um, was asked ever so nicely by my mother-in-law actually begged after she saw the one that I made for Lisa to make her a wool peddler shawl so I made one and finished it. You can see that it's nice and huge. Um, on my screen, that's looking kind of a bluey purple. It's a really just royal purple. I mean, it's just, I don't know, like dark grape juice purple, um, but it's nice and big. And, and I, haven't even, I haven't even soaked it yet. So when it relaxes out, it's going to be quite huge. She'll be able to wrap up in it and be nice and warm. This is a Merino Angora blend. Um, and it's really nice and soft and has that really nice halo that Angora gives and it's super soft. I think I said that already. Um, and she gets cold really easily. So this will be great for her because Angora is seven times warmer than wool. Um, I need to make one of these for myself. This pattern is so addicting. I have thoroughly enjoyed both of them that I made. And now I think it's my turn to make one for myself. <laughs> So anyways, I did this on size eight needles. Um, I don't remember, um, oh, what's the, what's the name of the yarn? Sable, Sable yarn. It's, it's old. This is deep stash from somebody else's stash, old yarn store. Anyways, um, but it's gorgeous. All right. Um, the other finished object I have is my fireflies at dusk. And I am so in love with this. It's a shawl that's more of a wrap. It's actually the class that I'm teaching right now. I'm gonna fold it in quarters so you can see the colors first and then I'll open it up. So this yarn is not a stripey yarn. It just variegated exactly to the, <laughs> to the size um, of the rows here. So this one is called Mama Africa. That's the color name. It was part of a kit that I got from um, Nurturing Fibers. She's out of Cape Town, South Africa. So, um, this is, this is representative of the colors that Nelson Mandela would have seen when he was in prison when he looked over um, to the mainland. So there's the, the rocks and the water and the sand and, and the um, vegetation and things like that. So um, I just absolutely love it. And the gray actually was a part of that kit. So the gray matches exactly. This blue, you can see, uh, let me hold it up here a little bit better is beaded and I'll hold it um, open when I open it up I'll show you better um, and this was dyed by Fiona when she was doing um, solar flare fibers this was the um, the eyes have it or something like that um, and you can see that they match perfectly so this is like I said, nice and big. This is actually a little smaller than, than the largest size, mainly because I ran out of yarn. Well, I was going to go smaller anyways, and then I ran out of yarn, so I was like, perfect! And it got ginormous when I soaked it, too. 
So, like I said, I will hold this up for you. So you can see, and I could have blocked it out much more aggressively. Let's see if I can get a hold of this to show you. You know, I really could have stretched it. I didn't want to because I just want to use it as a blankie that I can carry along but still look nice. Um, it's great for at church because they always have it at, you know, 10 below zero in there. And so what I do is I kind of, I know I have a sweatshirt on, but I kind of set it off to the side like this and throw it over my shoulder and it sticks to itself and I look nice, but I can sit and knit or I can, a lot of times I'll just kind of go like this underneath it. And it's like, I have a blankie with me, but it's still pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this shawl is so much fun to make because first you knit this way and then you pick up the stitches along here. And what's nice is you can customize this because she tells you how many, instead of just overall pick up X amount of stitches, she says pick up X amount of stitches between here and then pick them up, you know, in this ridge section. So that way you know exactly how many you should be picking up. So then you work down and you, and you only have to deal with the beads, you know, for I think 20 rows or something like that, 25 rows. And then you go into this very memorizable lace pattern. And then you pick up the sides here and put the edging on. And then you do the other side and then you do the top. So um, super, super fun. Like I said, it's called Fireflies at Dusk. It's by Priscilla Madsen. And I knit it on size sixes, which is a four millimeter um, and my sixes broke. I have the worst luck with size six 32 inch needles. Um, and these are even chow goos that are metal, like, you know, metal inside of them. I still have this in here and it broke. It must be the way that I, that I push. I don't know. Cause I was working back and forth. So it's not like I was, you know, holding it and, you know, pushing the whole time, but yeah, it completely, uh, can you see that? Just completely broke. There's just two, like two or three little fibers holding it together. I don't know if they have a return policy or a replacement policy. Um, I should contact um, the person I got it from and see, but I just have the worst luck with that size. Um, that is all I have to show you as far as that goes, but I do have some acquisitions to show you really quick. Oh, design first. I have released um, the hat pattern that I was keeping secret for so long. And um, I'm sure most of you have seen it. I, I have one right over here. Let me grab it. I forgot to grab it. I have a few of these, but these are the two that are sitting right here. So um, here's what it looks like. You have a turned um, hem brim so you can be nice and warm around your ears um, and then you just work your way alternating through the colors it looks like it's stranded color work but it's not you're only ever working one yarn at a time and then um, you have these rapid decreases at the top which are really fun and make kind of a swirly pattern it's a, a little bit of a tall hat which I love because then I can slouch it just a little bit. Um, this one was made out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works, um, her cozy base, which is her worsted weight base. And this is the turquoise blue and some undyed. Um, and then um, I contacted Steve from Dramatic Knits and asked him if I could use one of his mini skein sets. And so what I did was I held it doubled. And so this one has, let's see, this one has five colors. So it has this, the dark blue, the light blue, the um, purple, the kind of taupe, and then the kind of a sage green, which is looking kind of blue on there. Um, but like I said, because it's just a little bit tall, you can pull it down to slouch just a little bit. It's not super slouchy, but it just kind of has that little, you know, kind of bump there um, that looks that looks super cute. Or, you know, if you if you really needed to to pull it down over your ears, you could. Sorry. Um, so there's, there's, the, there's the design, <laughs> the design element of the podcast. It's called Color Tracks. Steve helped me 
to name that because I just couldn't think of a name. And he said, it looks like different tracks of color, you know, leaving tracks as you go on. And I said, oh, that's perfect. I love it. And so color tracks it is. <laughs> um, so a couple acquisitions. Do I have any of them sitting up here? No. Okay. They're all right here. Um, one, two. I thought. I guess it's just those two. I thought for some reason I had a third one in my brain, but I guess not. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is actually another mini skein set from Leading Men Fiber Arts. And this is going to be a shop sample of my hat. So it's Perfection, Poison Apple, Drama Queen, Safety Dance, and Nude Scene. And I think this is going to be an amazingly stunning hat. And I cannot wait to knit it up. I don't know what order I'm going to go in. Um, I'll play with the colors together and see uh, which ones I want to um, pair up and, and do with. So anyways, there's that. And this is their um, show stealer base, which is their merino cashmere nylon base. And then the other thing I have to show you just came. Um, a couple years ago, I did a shop sample for Damselfly Fibers and Damselfly Yarn? Damselfly Yarns, excuse me. And I did, I did a color affection and she said um, she offered a $100 shop gift certificate, essentially, um, for doing this this uh, shawl and I was like yes 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 I will make that shawl for you I've made it tw two other times and I love making it and so I made it and I've just had this credit that's the word I was trying to think of credit sitting there available and I just couldn't think of what I wanted and finally I was like I just want to make a worsted weight sweater I just want to have the the yarn at one color to just make a nice just worsted weight sweater so I contacted her and I said, hey, um, I know it's been a little while, but um, can I still have that shop that, you know, turn in my credit? And she's like, of course, you know, and and so we started talking about what um, what I wanted to make or what I wanted to to have, excuse me. And I told her I just wanted a nice um, uh, just some worsted weight and kind of a medium gray but with with kind of splotches of the light and dark gray mixed on there I'm pulling up the pattern really quick so I can show you what I had in mind it's I hope you don't laugh at me it's an old 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 pattern it's from the lion brand book um, in 1912 and it's called ladies knitted derby coat and the picture cracks me up because it's so 19, uh, 1912. So here's what it looks like. See, gotta love the hair. Here's what it looks like. I love that it's just a classic, um, just a classic sweater with the folded cuffs that look super warm and it has some, some pockets over there. Here's the cool thing, the construction. You start at the back, it's where it's worked flat. You, you start at the back and you work up. Um, and it, it reminds me of, of Megan's um, literally over the top because you go up and then you just work the one side back down and then you pick up and do the other side back down and then you just, you sew the seam there. And I, I just, I love the construction. I love that it's just a sweater I could grab and put on and just wear and anyways I think it's cool <laughs> it's okay if you don't like it but I think it's really cool and I love that back then when they wrote patterns they just they wrote it out assuming you knew what you were doing and so it, it's like a page long it's one page a whole sweater pattern because it just says you know do this now mirror it or whatever and I like I don't know. I like when it's just nuts and bolts of stuff, but enough that I can follow it. So without dragging it out anymore, here is oh, the gorgeous yarn. It is her Kona base, which is 100% superwash merino, 220 yards. Um, it says, hand dyed by the shores of Martha Lake on Kona yarn from Henry's Attic. 
So she called this colorway Cloudy Day. And you can see that it has these beautiful kind of darker sections in there to just give it some depth, you know, just so it's not just plain, but then it has this lighter spot. Anyway, it's so beautiful. And I, I was able to get five skeins and I just paid, I paid the difference. It was like 10 bucks. Um, so for the cost of my time knitting a color affection shawl and $10, I am going to get a custom hand dyed sweater. And I'm so, so in love with this yarn. I just can't even, ugh. I didn't even have to, I, I mean, she just, she said, okay, what is it that you want? And I explained it and she asked me like one other question and then poof, she sent me a picture and said, here it is. Do you want more dark or anything? I was like, it's perfect. Send it just like it is. <laughs> it's exactly what I had in my mind. So I think it's going to be the perfect color yarn for that sweater. It'll be, you know, a modern look with the kind of dark and light thrown in there with the old, um, with the classic um, sweater look and um, anyways it's super cool I'm really excited about it and um, Quinn is starting to flip out a little bit about a blank here a binky I don't know if she must have dropped one of them and she's been in there for a little bit anyway so I am going to say goodbye for now if you need to get a hold of me I am Meltran Designs like I said on Ravelry and Instagram and Periscope and I'm a non no, I'm a Nonzi on Ravelry. I think I might change that. I'm a Nonzi on Ravelry on Instagram, Periscope. I'm Meltran Designs. There's a Meltran Designs group on Ravelry, and there's also the Fiber Fanatics Unite Retreat group. Please go check it out if you um, think you might want to come. And for now, I will say goodbye. Until next time, keep knitting. <laughs>